Hey everyone, Brett from the Tuning School here. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do a couple quick calculations to figure out the right size injectors on your application. I wanted to go over how to estimate the proper size injectors for your application. And the reason I'm going to do this is because I've seen a bit of an influx of phone calls and tech tickets and emails about this. So I kind of imagine you guys are sitting on our website looking at injectors and kind of going, eh, I'm not really sure which ones are for me. Um, so I've got a couple formulas I want you to write down and kind of learn from, and I'm going to show you how they all work out. All right, so first off, we're going to need a calculator, and you probably want a pen and paper. Um, now, there's two methods to figuring this out, and so what I'm going to do is start off with... Um, with the method that basically estimates how much horsepower your injectors that you have can uh, sustain. And so what you want to do is you want to think about this. Hey, I've got this injector. How much horsepower can this injector safely handle? And so let's start off with the formula. So our formula is going to be pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with our injector size. Usually we're going to do this in pounds per hour. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to multiply that by the number of injectors. Okay. Now we're now going to put a divide uh, uh, line here, and we're going to be talking about brake specific fuel consumption. Okay. Now, for a naturally aspirated vehicle, this is going to be somewhere around 0.45 to 0.50. Now, I recommend that you use a little bit higher number because that's going to help keep things conservative in your calculations. So, for example, if we have an NA vehicle, I'm going to use um, 0.50 for uh, sorry um, for NA. Okay, and if we have a turbo vehicle or a supercharged vehicle, we're going to use 0.65. All right, for forced induction. All right, now um, we've got this big formula up here. And what we're going to do is we're going to first work this part of it out. So here, let's grab our calculator and we're going to clear it out. And let's just pretend that we have an injector size. Let's say we have a 60 pound injector. All right. Um, and so we're going to take that 60 pound injector time the number of injectors that we have. Let's say it's a V8, like a Mustang or a um, Camaro or whatever. Um, we're going to multiply those two together. And then we're going to divide by our brake specific fuel consumption value. And in this case, let's just go with the force induction. So we're going to do 0.65. So let's take our calculator. We're going to do 60 times 8. Get that answer. We'll divide by 0.65. And we get 738. Now we'll hold that for a moment. And the next part of this is we're going to multiply by our max injector duty cycle. So this is going to be our injector duty cycle okay now the thing is is that our, our duty cycle for me I like to use 0 0.80 that means 80% duty cycle some folks will use 0 0.85 or even 0 0.9 85 90% duty cycle I feel that a good safe range for most injectors is going to be 0 0.80 so in this case I'm going to come down here and I'm going to uh, we've already done this part of the math we're going to multiply by 0 0.80, which is our injector duty cycle. This is the maximum injector duty cycle. So we're really calculating the kind of the limit of our injectors. And so if we come back here and we multiply by 0 0.80, we get a value. I'm sorry, I hit division. Um, let's go to history real quick. So we've got 60 times 8 divided by 0.65. That's our 738, and we're going to hit multiply by 0 0.80, and we get 590 crank horsepower. All right, so we've just estimated how much horsepower at the crank 
a specific size of injectors can handle based on whether it's a naturally aspirated vehicle or force inducted and also the number of cylinders the vehicle has. If you've got something different, just change that variable and that will help you calculate that. Now keep in mind this is at the crank, so it is not at the wheels. That's because there's different drivetrain losses and really we're worried about what the engine is consuming, not about our drivetrain losses. All right, now that you've done that, I wanna also express that if you are going to run alternative fuels like E85, you're going to need a bigger fuel system. In this context, if we are at 590 crank horsepower, this would be for your normal pump gas, your things that have about a 14 to one, uh, 14.08 or 14.7 stoichiometry, somewhere in that area. But when we get to E85, we actually need to scale this a little bit more. So um, for example, if this was E85, um, we would want to then multiply, we want to, we want to, decrease this value by about 30-35% because it takes more fuel from E85. So we would actually take this, if this was E85, we multiply by about 0.70 or 0.65 and that would give us a new value that the injectors could support because again E85 uses a lot more fuel to get the same job done in that regard. Let's go ahead and move on to the way that you guys are probably going to use this the most and that's going to be estimating the uh, injector size based on the horsepower you want to make. So what I'm gonna do here is let's just open up a new whiteboard here. Now the formula is about the same as what we saw uh, before, but it's just kind of backwards. So what we're gonna start off with is the horsepower desired. And that's at the crank still. And we're gonna divide that by our max injector duty cycle, and that's gonna be around 0.80 again, okay? Then we're gonna multiply this by our brake specific fuel consumption value. For your NA vehicles, this is gonna be uh, 0.50, and for force induction, this is gonna be 0.65. Next, go ahead and divide by the number of injectors And that's going to give you your estimated injector in pounds per hour. All right. So let's go ahead and do two examples of these. Let's, let's go ahead and assume that you want to make 400 crank horsepower on a naturally aspirated setup. Okay. And so we'll do that part first. And we'll multiply by 0.50 and then we'll divide by the number of uh, injectors, in this case it'd be eight for a V8, and we'll get our estimated size of our injector. So let's go ahead and use our calculator here. We're gonna do, clear that out. We've got 400 divided by 0 0.80 times 0.5, and then divided by eight. So in this case, for a regular pump gas, we'd have roughly a 31 pound injector. And of course, if you're looking at them, I would go to the next size up. Don't go too big, but the next size up. And that way you've got a little extra headroom because keep in mind, this is still running that injector at 80%. So we'd rather the injector live at 50% or 60%. So instead of uh, you know going that high, um, we'd rather you know go the, to the next size up. So if it was a 36 was the next size or a 40 was the next size, that's what I would recommend. Um, let's go ahead and do this one more time. We're gonna do this with a supercharged or force inducted turbo vehicle, something like that. And let's just say you wanted 850 crank horsepower. All right, so we're gonna go back here and do our math. We're going to start with 850 divided by our max injector duty cycle. And then we're gonna multiply by our um, brake specific fuel consumption value. In this case, it's gonna be 0 0.65 because it uses, you have to run them a little richer, which means there's more fuel consumption as well. And then we'll also do eight cylinders because most of the vehicles we're talking about are eight cylinders. All right, so we'll do 850 divided by 0 0.80. And then we're going to multiply by our brake specific fuel consumption value of 0 0.65. And then we're gonna divide that number by eight. 
All right. So in this case, we would have about an 86 pound per hour injector. Now again, this is all talking about pump gas. If I was going to discuss E85, at this point, if I said, okay, well, this is great for pump gas. What if I run, wanna run E85, what size injector? What I would do is take this last value that we just got and I would multiply it by 30 to 35% because that's about how much extra fuel you need uh, or kind of how much more fuel is consumed using E85. So I would actually multiply by 1.35 um, to do 35% and that would give me a new value over here. So depending on the setup you're trying to run, you might need to consider this as well. So for example, let's just take um, 86 times 1.35 and you end up with 116 uh, pound per hour injector. From there, you can calculate, you know, what size or basically what you've done is you've figured out what size injector you need. Um, again, keeping in mind that this is talking about 80%. So I always like to go to the next size. I also don't recommend going extremely large. So if you need a thousand cc injector or a hundred pound injector, um, and the next size is, you know, say a 1250 or 1400 cc or say a 125, 130 pound injector, that's okay. But if we only need a thousand cc's and we go to a 2000 cc injector, or we need, you know, a hundred pounds and we go to a, you know, 250 pound injector, um, the problem is, is that eventually you get into these injectors that are so large that your idle quality and things at low engine speeds where not much fuel is needed are very difficult to control. So you end up with um, poor fuel trims and overly rich conditions because these injectors are so large that you can only open and close them so fast. And so you're actually getting maybe too much fuel and you're in that low slope nonlinear portion, which is a little bit harder for the PCM to kind of compensate for on really large injectors. Um, they have gotten a lot better than they were a decade ago. So I'm not saying they're all just junk. Um, I'm just saying, you know, don't just say, okay, well, hey, I'm going to double the size. Um, unless eventually your build's going to get there and you're just trying to purchase things once, which is a wise thing to do. Uh, just understand there is a trade-off the larger things go. Anyways, I hope this helps some people out there. I hope I didn't make it too long, but this is kind of some information I thought that might be valuable for you guys to understand. Write down these formulas and keep them in a book that you use for your tuning, and that way you can make sure you're selecting the right injectors for you or your customers. Anyways, happy tuning and thanks.